Hello, it's me, and I've got an unboxing to do. This comes from a Raiden Chia, and he had a couple of puzzles and was wondering if I could uh, demonstrate, give them a spin, and I said, sure. One thing I like to do is to uh, support any builders or designers that can do some great work on puzzles. So, let's see what he's got. Okay, so once again, this comes from Raiden Chia, and let's see what we've got. Well, right now, it looks very hopeful. So, what's very... Um, fascinating to me is just the portable size of some of these larger modifications. And I believe this was made by extensions, but let's go in and take a look. Okay, so this is a very interesting silver looking puzzle. Okay, very portable looking right off the bat. So um, I guess we'll start off with this guy over here. This is a one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's a five by five by nine. So this is a shape-shifting puzzle. Give it a couple of spins here. Very nice, very smooth. You can see where the extensions are. So here's the base puzzle here. One, two, so it looks like it's probably a, um, a nine by nine as it's filled over here. And this one is glued a little bit here and that can happen. So sometimes it takes just a, well, I'll come back to that. This moves very nicely here, very nicely over here. And I don't want to ruin the puzzle. I don't want to break the puzzle. Maybe a little bit of gentle. Let me see if there's something here that's holding it together. No. Sometimes with the process of gluing or I think we're okay here. We're okay here, here. Aha, there we go. Okay, no big deal. No big deal at all. Moves pretty well. This side moves really well as well. Uh, okay, so you can see the baseline puzzle here. These are pieces that are sort of glued together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a nine by nine. And you can see what he did is he took three pieces here, put an extension over them, sort of like a cap, and put stickers on them. And ended up with this puzzle here. So it's really a bandaged nine by nine. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, even with these bandaged extension puzzles, it's interesting to uh, see how well that they move, that they don't snag. It's more than just a matter of gluing it on, it's to see how well it snags. All right, let's do a checkerboard pattern. Still a little catchy over here, but otherwise okay. So I have to say that, that the playability is, is excellent. So I'm going to give this more of a spin here. Excellent. And we'll spin this over here too. Get our full checkerboard. Okay, not bad. Now, for someone like me, the whole key is the shape shifting. So I'll move this down here and, ah, excellent. Okay, good. Good, good. So when you think about it, as this demonstrates, all of these cuboids, they're really just bandaged versions of, of cubes. So you can take any of your cubes and turn it into a bandaged version here. So I would say that when it comes to creating new type puzzles, it's really the n by n plus one by n plus one, like the five by six by seven or three by four by five. That takes some CAD designing. But if you want to do a shape shifter or even an ultimate shape shifter, then all you really need to do is take your puzzles and just bandage it, and you end up with, with this. Now, I do have another five by five by nine in my collection, and that's this guy over here. So you can see the difference. Uh, being a bandaged puzzle, this has uh, different shapes to all the pieces. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the kind of look that you would go for on a puzzle like this when you have to bandage it. When you go back to the drawing board and design it, then you end up with a puzzle like this. Now, this is very appealing from the standpoint of the fact that all the pieces look the same. So this is designed from the bottom up. This is 3D printed, and you can see the corners are, are um, the same size as everything else. So that makes it appealing. This is appealing as well. Um, it's uh, certainly easier from the standpoint of putting extensions on. The problem with this puzzle, it is really, really stiff. Now, that's not a fault of the of the puzzle itself is a 3D designed puzzle. Maybe it just has to do with this particular version and they have to work on that. But that's why I didn't use this too much because I thought I was going to break it if I, if I use it. You can see just how stiff this is. I'm sure I can maybe get into it and uh, maybe lighten it up a little bit. And I thought of maybe doing that. Oof. Um, and as you look in here, you can see that all the pieces are designed with a mechanism in mind. So, so you can see that 
within these pieces here, these are, like I say, designed from the bottom on up. So it's not very playable. It's portable in that it's, uh, it, it um, you know, the size, is, the size is pretty good, but it's not very playable. But again, I might be able to tweak it. This one is, so you can see all this powder that's down here too, so. That's one of the issues with prototyping. I would eventually like to see something like this maybe find its way to mass production just because of the look at it. But I think with all these smaller versions of puzzles, especially over the top kind of puzzles, leaves open the ability to do a puzzle like this. Well, I can't resist, I have to scramble it. Because ultimately that's what this is all about. Scramble it and then give it a solve. Uh, so I would say for, for what it is, the kind of puzzle that it is, it's an extension puzzle, not a ground-up, three-dimensionally designed puzzle. Um, it's pretty good. And if you want a good-looking uh, shape-shifting cuboid, I think that this will certainly serve, and I think it's very portable, too. Um, let's do some shape-shifting moves here. Um, now, as I start to shape shift, I'm going to start to bandage the puzzle. So I'm going to do it like this first. So that I can maybe minimize some of the bandaging. So I would say very portable, very playable, very solid um, effort to create a 5x5x9. Five by five by uh, again, it's not as in proportion, but this has been rendered not very playable at all. So if I want to get my 5x9x9 five by nine by nine fix, it would be this, it would be certainly this puzzle. But at some point to have something that looks like it's it's de novo created from the bottom up would be nice, but I don't think we're there yet. Okay, now we go to the next. And that's this guy here. Now, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, and it uh, is from a smaller uh, version of a 10 by 10. So this is created by a 10 by 10. Uh, you can see over here um, the uh, extensions. Uh, so you can see this extension was put on here. Do a checkerboard. And once again, I have to compliment Jaden on his work. It is a very well playable puzzle. So because of its size, it has portability. Because of the smoothness of design, it's got a, good, a lot of good playability. And um, that's not easy to do on a puzzle like this because you know you really have to pay very close attention to the size. You gotta get the size exactly right, you gotta file it down. So there's no doubt about it, a puzzle like this takes a lot of work. There's an interesting little squeak as I go through there. I think I can get used to that. Now I don't have a bottom up eight by eight by 10. This is very satisfying to hold as well. So it's, uh, it's got a lot that's working for it. Okay. So it's an even layer puzzle, so you're not going to get much of a. Um, you're not going to get much of a checkerboard pattern unless I do that. So now I'll go across like this, this. So the squeaking is, I think, just uh, how these pieces are coming across each other. It's a little unique. I've not seen that in other puzzles before. But if that's what it takes to keep it stable, well then, so be it. Okay, very good. Now, I do have another 10 by 10 by 8. And actually, I think I might have said 8 by 8 by 10. This is 10 by 10 by 8. And that's this beast over here. So this also is um, an extension. Now, this is a tray from product. So by uh, being a tray from product, you can see that there's, there's no sign at all of any um, extensions. Now, I believe... Uh, this is not a cut down. I think that this is an extension, but uh, Trafum really does a lot to sort of hide that and make it look like its own its own puzzle over here. With this guy, you can see you can see the uh, puzzle underneath. So uh, there's a little bit less. Now that's that's there's a little bit less post processing. That might be where that squeak is coming from over here because you can see the puzzle underneath. With the Trafum product, it's a big puzzle, and you don't see any hint of it. So there's a lot of time that was taken, and you can see that there's a lot of very good smooth moving. Now, bear in mind, Trafim is a master builder. He takes care with every, um, with every note, with every detail of it. Uh, but you can see that this is nice in that it is more playable than this puzzle. Um, it's smaller. Uh, the movement is smooth. A little bit of a wobble over here with that squeak. But otherwise, it's not bad. Uh, the price is in a much uh, affordable, more affordable range. So with the Trafim product, you know. Uh, movement is very smooth, takes two hands to hold, 
It's a large puzzle, uh, but it's very smooth. It's about as good and smooth moving as a puzzle as you can want. But let's let's give this a spin as well. We'll put these in the background here. So let's try some shape shifting moves. Very nice, very nice. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, just do 180 degree scrambles to try to separate as many of these pieces as possible. Okay, the squeaking version is um, a little distracting, but not bad. It's, it's not bad. And again, it probably has to do with, uh, now these feel like it's well aligned, but maybe it's um, just a little bit more of a cleft here. Come to think of it, because it's this kind of a shape shifter, I don't have to do 180 degree moves. I can expand the process just by doing these 90 degree moves. Now the sound that it's making is kind of eerie because it's not the usual sound that you hear. So sometimes I don't know what to make of it. Okay, Chris Splat. Okay, so not bad. Now let's make with the shape shifting. I'm gonna go like this. Let's do it. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna do it like this first, which I think. So yeah, I would say this is a really very solid puzzle. They both are. If you want to get a puzzle that is not is not going to break the bank. So there you have it. This is what it looks like. Really fascinating looking puzzles. Uh, I have to give this really high marks just in terms of um, um, being exactly what it says to take a base puzzle, glue on extensions, and get yourself some, uh, some shape shifters. Um, we're still not at the point where we can have them look symmetric, and it takes maybe more time if you have it to do a lot of the post-processing, but for what it is, I would say that Raiden has himself two really good triumphs, and I have no choice but to highly recommend something like these puzzles. Now I'm going to have a really good time solving these. Thanks for watching. Now if I were to solve it, we can start off with this guy over here. Uh, first thing I would do is um, get in the, uh, the base sides here. So, um, basically solving for the centers. So here's the green, and I'm just gonna put in the rest of the green centers. I've got this over here, bang, and the other center. Luckily, this is a giant puzzle, but it's not so giant that it can't be placed in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, let's move this here. So to really evaluate a puzzle is to go through the solve experience. Right now, um, right now it's really, really fun. Uh, I like a puzzle that's smooth moving, uh, something that's playable. So right now, um, I just have a very happy feeling going through the process of moving this around and going through a solve. Okay, now perspective is always a little challenging with these puzzles because sometimes you're not sure which level they're at. Okay, move this over to here. The other thing about these uh, shape shifters is alignment. Now sometimes you can get a little click to know that you're in alignment, sometimes you don't. Okay, so what I have here is I have the first side. Well, the first center. So I'm gonna continue to solve for the centers. Turn it here and back over here. Okay, so all my centers are in. And now what I have to do is edge placement. So these are the five by five edges, which are the only unbandaged ones. So we have the white and orange. Find some other white and oranges, which are right here. Okay, so so far I must admit I am really enjoying this puzzle. Okay, so this will come down. Bump it out of the way. Get my alignment back here. Turn, down, and up. This will come to here, and we're gonna move this one down. Turn, turn turn and back. Okay, so I'm gonna to continue to, to do that. I'm gonna to continue to get all of these edges in here. Okay, 
So now I'm down to the last two. And let's see how this is going to work. This will go here, this will go here, and this should go here, I suppose. So we're going to move this in, then do R, F, I, U, R, I, F. Now this even accommodated just a little bit of corner cutting. So now I have this, but this is floated in wrong. That's a Red Bull algorithm. 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2 up, RI, 2 up, R, 2 up, 2F, R, 2F, LI, sorry. Li, that's what it is, 2b and 2r. Okay, so that was just the, pre the preliminaries. You can see that we, we've got this more in chunks, so to speak. So this is a reduced five by five. And so now we're gonna do the three by three solve and then fill in all the gaps. And that's how I do a shapeshifter. So we're gonna start off at the top and this will be brought into its place over here. And this blue one, We'll turn here, move this into here, up, and this back down. So I'm getting my cross. This belongs with the red. So we're gonna go turn this here and down. And this is this belongs with the green, so turn it like so. Okay, now that I've got the cross, this is a very crisp feeling puzzle. Very well crafted. Highly, highly recommended. Okay, turn this here, and we'll roll this in. So you can see I'm, I'm doing a little bit of corner cutting, not, not um, meaning to, but just sort of as it's moving. And the puzzle is really giving me signs that it can do that. The extensions are very well placed. Okay, so that's in over there. And now we're just gonna apply our three by three techniques to placing the rest of the middle edges, so to speak. Oh, see that? I turned it, it was malaligned, but it accommodated that. So any other inferior puzzle would have popped. This didn't pop, that's an excellent sign. I have an edge that's already, oop, nope. Miscalculated, that's okay. Turn. Turn, turn, turn. Okay, so I can see that a lot of care was taken to make this puzzle truly great. To R, to you. Okay, this is good. This, we're gonna have to move out so that we can move it in. Now this might have to do with the good judgment that he used to use a good baseline puzzle that's very stable. Or maybe he did some modifications. However you look at it, right now it is a very enjoyable solve experience. Okay, so so that um, that's the three by three solve of this. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is this. Why don't I do this? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and solve this because in actuality, these two kinds of cuboids are different kinds of cuboids. This is actually just a shape-shifting cuboid. This is what I call a floppy. Now a floppy is something that goes by the, goes by n by n plus two by n plus two. So these are things like the one by three by three or uh, something that has a, a two of the long ends and one of the shorter ends. So the eight, the eight by 10 by 10 would be something of a floppy. And I'm gonna show the difference between those kind of shape-shifting cuboids. Now, they both shape-shift on all axes, but you've got two axes that are the same. One axis has the two shorter ones that are the same, the other has the two longer ones that are the same. And the solve is a little different, so I'm gonna do a three by three solve of this after I've done the three by three solve of this, and I'll explain to you why I categorize them as differently because they have different complexities, different types of parodies that can potentially happen. So this is the n by n by n plus two. So the five by five by nine, although it's not n plus two, I should say maybe n plus m or something like that. But basically it gets you into this um, situation where I have to solve these levels over here. Uh, and it's slightly different 
and it's slightly different after we finish the 3x3 solve on something that's a floppy, and I'll show you what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and do a 3x3 by by sol uh, by solve here too. Now this is an even layer puzzle, so it's a little different. Uh, I basically have to decide where I want my centers to be. So let's say I do the green centers first. So I'll start to put them in. Okay, this will come over to here. So I'm just going to get all my stripes. And I'm going to do that by way of solving the, uh, um, let's see, solving the middle stripes first. So I've got this over here. Um, by the way, this was fantastic. Uh, just uh, moving it into this position, this was a very fun puzzle, very smooth moving puzzle as well. So highly recommend it for those that like those kind of puzzles, like I do. All right, so here's another green. So... Let's see, is it here? No. Maybe this over here. And I don't think so. A little bit of hunting around here. One, two. Okay, that squeaking is just a little bit distracting, I have to admit. Okay, so let's find the other. Okay, and that's going to look like this. That's going to be move this one in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce all the centers. Now, I think the squeaking is mostly... Nope, it's actually on, it's on all the layers. If I can get used to that, I think we'll, we'll be fine. Alright, so I can say so far there is no popping of this puzzle. That's a good sign, too. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, so I got this to the point where I've got all the centers reduced, and I reduced the edges too. So it was, um, well, actually I've got two that I don't have reduced yet, which are these guys. This one and this one. So it was it was good. It was uh, The only issue was that squeaky sound, but I got used to it. But the movement other than that is, is really good. Now it's a matter of getting the last two edges, and um, that's going to be a matter of moving this to here. So I'm just going to do it from the inside to the outside. So move it in here. R, F, I, U, R, I, F, and then we swap it whoop, back. Okay, so these two are in, so that's all good. Now this has to move, and that is going to move to here. And this will move into here. Well, this will go here. I don't want to do it quite like that. I think it might be best if I do it with a white one. Yeah, that way this will go here, this will go here, and this will go up here. So we're going to move this in, like so. Then do R, F, I, U, R, I, F. What I'll also tell you is that the stability of the puzzle is really good too. Aside from the squeaking, it doesn't pop so it doesn't have any issues with stability. Just gotta get used to that sound. Uh, all are in except for these two, and that's two R, two B, two U, L, two up, R, I, two up, R, Two up, two F, R, two F, L I, two B, and two R. Okay, so we now have this reduced, and we're just going to go through our three by three solve. Um, and this is where you're going to find a difference. After we did the 3x3 three three solve here, we still have to get these layers. And we'll see what we have to do regarding the 3x3 three three solve here. So I'll do it based on the yellow side. So I'll move this to here. This is the green one, so I'll turn this up. And move it down. Actually, this yellow is already here. So we got lucky with that one. In, 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 and where's the other yellow one right here? So we'll move this down this up. Okay, so you can see that this moves pretty well. Okay, now I put the edges in. 
uh, the corners in rather, right here. And boom, okay. And this guy goes over here. So you can see I'm doing just a little bit of corner cutting, not a lot. So both of these puzzles have that capacity. Okay, last layer here. Now this is an even layer puzzle. So because it's even, we can get parity. F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I. And we do have parity. This is upside down. So let's split it. Okay, now I'm just doing the top here. Do a corner swap. Do it like this. 2R, U, 2R, U, I, 2R, turn, turn, 2R, U, I, 2R, U, 2R. This is turned back. It's all these in. Now I just have to move these guys in. The edges, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Flip these two. Well, actually, let's flip these two for reasons I'm about to show. 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Okay, our last bit of even layer parity. These two have to be swapped. A URF algorithm should do it. To U, to R, to F, to U, to U, to F, to R, to U. Okay, there's our three by three solve. All right, so there's very different um, strategies that we move from here in order to get the other layers. So in this case, I have everything except these layers over here, but notice with this, the layers are just isolated to here and here. In this case, it's all the different layers. It's dispersed out through all the different sides here. So this is the difference between a floppy cuboid and a shapeshifter cuboid. Not an ultimate shapeshifter, but just a shapeshifter. Um, in this case, what I would do is I would just sort of handle each layer independently. So I can actually work on this next layer here, the next layer just above where I did my base solve, my 3x3 solve, or my 5x5 reduction, just with sliding new techniques. So I've got three of these already in here, so I can go like this. So I've maximized what's here. Here I need to put a green one in, so I'm going to borrow that from this layer down here. So with it, I would move it in as I would just move this back to here. I'm going to double turn this so that I have this placed. I'm going to move it down to this level, pop another one in its place, not that one, another one in its place, this one, pop it back, and then move this whole thing back in. After doing that, this one that was just um, placed in here, move this down, pop this back in, and then move it up. Okay, so this is reduced. Uh, now I'm gonna go for this one over here, and same kind of thing. I'm just gonna move this in, like, nope. Where'd you go? Right over here, so I'm gonna use this one. So, just move it in, bring it down, Bring any other one in its place, like this one. Bring it back up. Move this back up over here. Now I'm gonna turn this. Move this in place. Turn this back. So now this is in. And finally, do the blue, and same thing. Let's move a blue one in. Move it here. Bring it to the lower level. Bump it out of the way. Bring this back. Move this back up. I bring this back down. Move this over here and bring it back up. Okay, so these guys are now all in. What I'm gonna do next is I have to get the edges in. 
Now again, it's not that I wanted to put this right where it belongs here, but I just had to make sure that I had centers in. I had three centers in. But now these edges. So which edges are here that ought to be here? Well, I'm going to do this all by sliding U technique. I'm not even going to think about it. So red and green. Here's a red and green here, and this is the correct one. So I'm going to move it back here, then move it in on the right, slide it to the left, do a 2L, slide it back to the right, 2R, slide it back to the left, and 2L, and move it back. Okay, so that's in. We go over here, red and yellow, or green and orange rather. What am I talking about? Green and orange, that's going to be this one. 2R, slide it to the left. 2L, slide it back to the right. 2R, slide it back to the left, and 2L. So I'm just really focusing on these over here. Uh, now I've got the yellow and blue. Let's see if I can find that here. Yellow and blue, it's not this one though. This is actually the yellow and blue that I want, so I'm gonna do this one, blue and red. It's actually this one. So these two just have to be flip-flopped, and that's what I'm gonna do. 2R, U, just this layer, 2R, UI, 2R, UI, D, with the complementary layer down here, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, and we might as well move this back. Okay, so what that did is it did put all these corners in, but the centers are out, but that's okay. I can just do an adjacent corner swap. So that's going to be 2R. Now I'm going to do this when I do an adjacent or an opposite edge swap rather, not corner swap, an opposite edge swap. It's going to create misplacement here and here. So I'm going to move this whole thing with it so that I can redo it over here and get this back. So it's going to look like 2R, 2U, the whole thing. 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. So you can see this is back, this was taken out, this was taken out, but no worries. I'll go 2R, no, just these two, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. And in that way, that gets that back. Oh, actually, that didn't work because these two got flipped. That's okay, though, because I can do a URF algorithm. So I'm going to do 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U. And that gets that back. So this layer is completely solved. My point is, is that I don't run into any edge parities by looking at this whole thing as an edge. I do it layer by layer, and I can, I can do that in the n by n by n plus 2. So I don't run into strange, bizarre brick parities or floppy parities. I'm just going to do it layer by layer. Now I can do the complementary layer over here, or I can go to layer above. Let's just turn this upside down and do the complementary layer here. First thing to do is to get these centers all in. So. Um, now, everything was already placed. Oh, actually, actually, I notice that I've got a problem here. So these are not correct. So I'm going to move this out. Actually, this one has to move in. So why don't we move this out like so. I'm going to move this down. Then we're going to go one, two, one, two. Okay, just got to do a little bit of damage control here. Red and green, which actually should be in this layer here. That's this. So, move this in. Move this out like so. Move this in. Back. Turn. 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 Okay, we got this back in. And now the green and yellow. Orange, rather. 2L. Move it to the left. 2 L, move it to the right, 2 R, move it to the left, and 2 L. Okay, so this is all back in. So now I'm going to turn this upside down, and what I want to do is get these in. So I'm going to treat these like um, they were edges. So these two are in, the rest are not. So I'm going to do a corner swap, and this red will come over to here to join this. So this whole thing will be my corner, 2 R, just this, U, 2 R, UI, 2R, UI, D, 2R, UI, 2R, U, and 2R. And this is moved back. Okay, that puts all of these, um, that puts these corner edges in here. Uh, what's interesting is that this isn't in, and this isn't in. That's very strange. 
Could it be that I have something wrong here? No. But these two are in. This is not. This is not. And this is. Hmm. Okay, well, let's move these two to here. We're going to go to our U. To our U. To our to you, to our, to you, to our, you, to our, UI, to our. Okay, that puts this in. I'm gonna move this over here, and this should be able to put all this back. To our, you, to our, you, to our, to you, to our, to you. To R, U, to R, U, I, to R. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. These are in, these are in, these are not, these have to be swapped. Okay, so we have a situation where these three are here, these three, we've, we've done this side. And that's the thing about these kinds of shape shifters, um, the N by N by N plus 2 is... Uh, is that you can do it layer by layer. So to get this in, and to, um, it's not a matter of swapping these, I have to enlist one of these guys here. So I'm gonna move this across here. And I'm gonna go one, two, to put this in. And it was a green one that I batted out, so I'm simply gonna move this here, and go one, two, and bring this back. That should not change the bottom one here, but it did put these guys in. So now that I have that done, oh, wait, we've got an issue with this guy, which means we've got an issue with this guy too. So I think the best way to deal with that is if I move the red one back here, it's going to exchange with this orange. So if I could do this, but if I can move an orange piece to here, then that's going to work well. So what that means is I'm going to want to exchange these two. So I'm going to do an adjacent edge swap. So we're going to do, do to our U, to our U, to our to you, to our to you, to our U, to our UI, to our. It does create some placement parity here, some misplacement, but we're not going to worry about that as of yet. Instead, we're going to go ahead and move this in so this yellow can match up with this yellow over here. I'm going to go one, two. So these are all in. This is in fine, as is this. So this one is perched to come into here, like so. Now when I move it back, this yellow one is going to end up here. I want to put this to here. So I'm going to flip-flop these two before I move it back. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to do another adjacent edge swap. To our U, to our U, to our to you, to our to you, to our U, to our UI, to our. Okay, upon doing that, I'm going to move this to here. This orange one is in. Move this here, that did get this back. This one has not been touched. And now I've got all these centers in. So that was a fun little um, journey around these over here. But what's fun about that is when you do layer by layer, this is pretty well put in. But because I can get false equivocation of one color with another, these are the techniques that I use, just sort of, sort of moving things around. Now, there's probably easier ways of doing that, but I don't memorize those algorithms. Instead, I like to intuit my way through it. Um, so, uh, in order to put the corners in, these two have to swap. I find the two corners that are in, and I just swap these two. Anyway, two so these corners are all in, I just have to put these edges in. So these two will swap to our U, to our U, to our, to you, to our, to you, to our, you, to our, UI, to our. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and swap. Uh, let's put the red one in. To our, you, 
to R, U to R, to U to R, to U to R, U to R, UI and to R. Okay, so now we have another issue. These two have to be swapped. But the problem is um, I can't swap these without swapping something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a version of the URF algorithm. I'm going to hold it to here. I'm going to swap these two. When I do that, it's an even layer version. It's going to move that up to here. Then I'm just going to swap it again. It's going to cause misplacement here, so it's an odd layer version, rather. When I do an odd layer version of the URF algorithm, it takes that and I have to swap something else, and that's going to be here. So that's going to look like 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, then to F, to R, to U, to F. It did swap these two, but it also swapped these guys here. So if you're doing an odd layer, you have to swap another odd. But I'm going to do it again through these guys, because this also got swapped. To U, to R, now I do my 2F here, to F, to U, then to F, to R, to U, to F, and this is where something interesting happens. It then pulls this to here and turns it into an even layer problem. If it's an even layer problem, then what I can do is I can um, now do the same URF algorithm, but it doesn't create any misplacement anywhere else. So that's 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U. And as you can see, it fixes it, so all that is in. So if it's any wonder to, to people why I really enjoy cuboids, this is the reason why. It's all of this strategy, and I don't like to memorize quick algorithms. There's no need to try to speed cube it. Anyway, so now we'll do this layer over here, and it's really the same kind of thing as we do layer by layer. So we're going to do this over here. First thing to do is let's go ahead and put these uh, um, centers in. So what I'm going to do is maybe assemble them from here. I'm going to move this out over here. So what I'm looking for, actually, is I'm looking for a blue one. So here's the blue one here, and the way I'm going to move this in is I'm going to use this blue one over to, over here. So I'm going to move this in like this. Now what I got to do is I got to move this out of the way to get this back. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, so I'm going to move this down here, bring this out of the way like so. I'm going to move this back. Then I got to get this back. In that way, that doesn't change this or this, but it did construct a blue one. So what I'm going to do is bring this down, put this in, move this back. Okay, so blue, yellow, red, now I just need the green. So for the green, I don't have any greens up here, so I, I have to construct it. So I'm going to hold this over to here and see, well, what can I do? Uh, well, I can pop this into here. So I'm going to do that by um, an edge swap, an adjacent edge swap using just these two. So I'm going to use these as the corners to our... U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Okay, this is where I need it. Now I have to get all of this back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a random um, opposite edge swap, keeping this safe. So 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. All right, that puts that in here. So assembled, assembled, assembled. I just got to move this into here, move it down, move it in, move it up. Okay, so I got centers all in. Now I just have to put edges in. Um, now the centers are not correctly placed, but that's okay for now. We don't have to necessarily do that. Uh, we could, so we can flip-flop these two. To our U, to our U, to our, to U, to our, to U, to our U, to our UI, to our. Okay, so I've got these two which are properly placed. Now I have to swap these two. To our, to U. To R, to you, to R, to you. Okay, so these are properly placed. Now we're just going to get these guys in. 
green and yellow. Here's a green and yellow here, but it's the wrong one. We don't have the correct one there. It must be up here somewhere. How about yellow and blue? Blue and blue is here. So move it in on the right, slide it to the left, move it out on the left, slide it back on the right, turn it on, turn it in on the right, slide it back on the left, turn it in on the left, and boom. So there it is. Blue and red. That's the wrong one. This is the right one. In on the right, slide it to the left, in on the left, back to the right. Wow. Slide it here and here and done. Okay. Red and green. It's got to be here. Oh, nope. It's here. So we need to do the green and yellow, orange rather. So move it in, slide it, move it out. Slide it back, in, back, out, boom. Now we can do the red and green, which is this. Turn, 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 and turn. Okay. So now this is in. So now we have the last layer here, and it's a matter of matching these guys up. So these two are in, and these two are in. So now we have that similar situation that we had before, where it's uh, something of an equivocation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to match these up with their perspective and places to go. So to our, to you, to our, to you, to our, to you. I'm going to match this one up to where it's supposed to go here. So to our you, to our you, to our to you, to our to you, to our you, to our UI, to our. Gets everything back that I needed. So this is in and this is in. These two are not. So they have to be exchanged and exchanged the way that we that we did. Um, now, I think what I did is I put this next to each other. Yeah, so put it next to each other. So to our you, to our you, to our to you, to our to you, to our you, to our UI, to our, just to get this uh, back this misplacement back. I'll go to our, to you, to our, to you, to our, to you. So this is made a lot easier with the fact that the puzzle moves so well. So right now it's it's a winner. It's a winner all the way. Okay. So now uh, we're going to get it back the same way that we did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom one here and I'm going to put this blue one in. When I put that blue one in. Oops, I mean the red one in. Put the red one in. When I put that red one in, I gotta be careful. I can pop it in here. But when I move it, this orange one is gonna come out. And I, I don't want this orange one. I want this orange one exactly where it is. So when I move it back out again, so that this orange one can stay, I'm gonna move this one out. And I'm actually going to flip flop these two. By flip-flopping those two, the red one that I put out, or the blue one that I put out, is going to come back into here. And it's waiting down over here. So we're going to do an adjacent edge swap to move this into this position without moving this position or this position. So to our you, to our you, to our to you, to our to you, to our you, to our UI, to our. We simply put it back. And now we have to go ahead and uh, get this misplacement out. So I'm going to go to our, to you, the easier one, to our, to you, to our, to you. This will move back, and that puts all these centers, generally speaking, where we'd like them. Uh, well, not where we'd like them, but we'd see that they're lined up. This is in. These two corners are in. Let's move these in here. So to our, you, to our, UI, to our, UI, D. To our UI, to our U, to our. This moves back, this moves in, and we're almost done except we still have these two. So this is an 
odd layer URFD algorithm, which means when I do that, it's going to create misplacement here and here. That's okay. 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, 2F. It put the misplacement here and here. So now let's go ahead and um, swap these two. It'll uh, take this misplacement and put over to here, which will turn it into an even layer one, which does not cause misplacement elsewhere. 2U, 2R, 2F. 2U, 2F, 2R. 2U, 2F. And it created the misplacement here. So this fix will not cause it to go anywhere else. Will not misplace it anywhere else because it's even layer. 2U, 2R, 2F. 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, and done. Okay, so that's by way of demonstrating two things. Number one, um, just how well this puzzle is made. So it's uh, not the um, uh, exact proportion version like this, but it's very portable, very playable. It's a really, really fun puzzle, so very well made. And number two, just to kind of get into why there's a different classification scheme for this kind of a cuboid. It's a shape-shifting cuboid, not an ultimate shape-shifter because it's got the same layer on two of its dimensions, two of its sides. It does have a nice fun little challenge when you just do it layer by layer, but there's none of the other parodies that we have to deal with except for just misplacement issues. Okay, for this guy it's a little bit different because here we had this whole layer that was in, this whole layer that was in, and the middle layer that was in, just by our 3x3 three three solve. In this one, each side has layers that are out, so we can't solve it the same way. This is a different kind of a, um, of a shape shifter, uh, but this is the n by n plus 2 by n plus 2. So this is a floppy kind of a puzzle. And this is done a little bit different. Uh, what we need to do is we need to free up as many of these sides as we can, and that means getting these guys flat. So the way that we're going to do that is we try to match up as many as we can, but I'm not going to be able to put these in unless I put this in. So I'm going to take as many as I can of the same layer, such as these, and I see this is up, this is up, and this is up, so I'm just going to move it up like so. Boom. And by doing that, it flattens all but this and this. Once I've got two, well, I can match this up to here, move this in like so, move this back, so now these can be brought down, and then uh, it'll be unbandaged. That's a Red Bull algorithm, 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2 up, RI, 2 up, R, Two up, two F, R, two F, L I, two B. We could do we could do the two R. Why not? Boom. Okay. So now everything is flattened. So now it's a matter of getting all of my edges back in here. Now, I should be able to do this by sliding U techniques, and maybe that's all I need to do. So that's what I'm going to do, bit by bit, step by step, one by one. So for instance here, this comes in like so, move it up to here, this comes down here, yeah. down here, move it to here, this comes up, move this back, and this comes up, and move this in. Okay, so that's really what it's gonna take. I'm gonna do all of these pieces exactly like that. So this, for instance, will come down to here. Now, the fact that this is, an, is not an ultimate shape shifter means that there's a key difference, a key benefit to this. Something that makes it easier is I can do sliding U techniques on all of these sides. This comes up here turn, and this comes up. 
If this were an ultimate shapeshifter, I can't, because some sides will be uneven. So all of these will correlate with all of these, which will cor correlate with all of these. So there's nothing really being locked up. But this is just the arduous process of getting all these guys in. So move this to here, bring this down here, move this down to here, bring it up, and up. Okay, and this is where the fact that this is a 10 by 10 comes into play. So I'm just gonna take all of these guys. It comes into play because it does mean a little bit more time to ta take and to do all these sliding new techniques. So let's come over to here. And turn. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the process of sliding you all of these guys in. Okay, so I basically put all these centers in. I just did it with sliding new techniques. So once again, just to reiterate, the main difference here is this is, you do your base solve, and then you do layer by layer. Here, it's more side by side because of the, well, because of the structure of the puzzle isn't conducive to layer by layer. Um, and there's certain bandagings that'll happen, so you'd have to do it side by side. Next step that I do is we'll pick a side and we'll just put all the edges in using the bottom portion to juxtapose it. We, <clears throat> here's two red and yellows that can go right here. So that's a nice URF algorithm here. So to you, to R, to F, to U, to U, and to F, to R, to U. So I think a lot of that squeaking is that this layer seems to be coming into contact with, um, I think almost with the base puzzle layer. Anyway, so all these are in. Let's go ahead and put some of these in. We'll just juxtapose it from the bottom here. So it's easy enough to put them in here. Three cycles, so move it in on the left, slide it to the right, turn to the right, slide it into the left, turn, and because there's no bandaging here, it's easy to do. And this comes into here, so that's in. Here's a green, so the green is gonna come into here. Put it on the left, slide it to the right, turn it to the right, back to the left. So, so far you've just seen sliding new techniques. No higher order strategy, just the Red Bull algorithm to flatten these guys as well as positioning. So it's easier from that standpoint. Okay, so these two can be slid in also with the URF, the even layer version. To U, to R, to F. To U, to U, to F, to R. And despite the squeaking, it still is very stable. No popping at all with this puzzle. Okay, now the other green one can slide into here. So we slide it into here, slide it to the left, 2L, slide it back to the right, 2R, and we go bang and splat. Okay, so that's in. Uh, we've got this guy here, and this is our last one on this side. Slide it in here, turn, slide it in here, turn back. Slide it here, turn here, and... Whoop. Okay, so smooth moving, it wants to move on its own. And slide it in here. Okay, so that completes that side. And now we're down to the last side here. The last layer, even. Uh, so looking at this, um, I see these two are in and these two are in. These are not. So this is something also of a floppy parity. What I want to do is I want to pair these edges here. Um, now we saw something like that over here, but what I use is I use another layer to solve it, but I can't with this. So this is what I call a floppy parity, where two edges are in. I'm, not, I'm only counting these terminal edges here. Well, they're, yeah, terminal edges here. But we have a process of swapping. Do we have everything in here? Yeah. So, right, so this needs to go here and this needs to go here, but I can't do just a corner swap because these, this will participate in the swapping. So let's move these two opposite each other. So let's go ahead and do an adjacent edge swap. Well, let's do it from here, yeah, let's do it here. To our U, to our U, to our, to U, 
to R to U, to R U, to R U I, and to R. Okay, uh, so these are opposite each other, but I kind of want to uh, get this misplacement out. So I'm going to go to R to U, to R to U, to R to U. And what I have left to do is the floppy parity strategy. And what that entails is it entails, um, basically these are opposite sides. I'm going to move this up like so. And by doing the Red Bull algorithm, this will come to here and this will come to here. When this green one goes to here, this green one will come up and be next to it. And this red one when it's here will go across here and be next to this red one. So we do, and from this position, to R, to B, oops, to U, L, to up, R, I, to up, R, to up, to F, R, to F, L, I, oops, to B, and to R. Okay, then I simply move this back up here, and you can see these are now paired. Now we have a little bit of damage to control to do here that sort of goes in with that algorithm, but it's easily fixed. These will all come down here, and I'll move this to the side, and then um, this whole thing will move down to here, move this back, this will come up, move this back to here, move this up, this will come back here, and it's fixed. Okay, so now that these edges are paired, it's just a matter of pairing the um, um, inner edges with the outer edges. So to do that, this is all set over here. But let's go ahead and move the red ones in. 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Now we have to move these guys in, this to here and this to here. So using this here, 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Nearly there. So now all these inner edges, all these edges are paired up. Now I just have to put them in with the proper side. So 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Now these two flip to R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, and done. Okay, over the top puzzles of their own right, but also made into these different floppy puzzles. What I like about it is they're flat, there's no Olsing effect, there's no pillowed effect, they're black and they're stickered, and that's great. Uh, the thing that I like about this more than the tray poom is how small it is, how portable it is, so there's great potential here. The only thing that I would work on is that squeaking sound. It's, it's really just a mild distractor, but, but it's, it's definitely there, as opposed to just sort of the smooth moving. But that's just a matter of taking time to get those fixed, but the potential of this is incredible. It's excellent. Um, I think that both of these poses are incredibly fun, but what I wanted to do is bring out the difference in cuboid classification with these. There's an inherent difference in the mechanism of the salt, the n by n by n plus 2, because that acts more as a column, in which case you can just do the remaining layers layer by layer, as opposed to the n by n plus 2 by n plus 2, where you can't do it layer by layer, it's more side by side, just because it's structure of the puzzle, where you can come into contact with the floppy parity. Well, I think that these are excellent puzzles to add to the collection. I think that they're far more functional versions of other puzzles that I have within the collection. And for Jaden, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to give these puzzles a spin. And I would ask that you go and check them out, as I think he's got some really great products in there. So there you have it. Excellent cuboids. Two different kinds of shape-shifting cuboids in the non-ultimate shape-shifting class where the solve strategy is very different, but very, very fun to solve, very satisfying solves. Thanks for watching.